Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's game, I wanted to ask a question. Do you have extra cards lying around that you don't use? Want to buy or trade for some extra cards but don't know how to maximize the value? Then you should try out today's sponsor, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. Don't waste hours trying to find the best buy list price for your cards online. Simply send them to Card Conduit and let them take care of the rest. I have used Card Conduit multiple times already. I always use them to get the best value for my extra cards. I get fair prices for my cards and they save me tons of time. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them your unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best price for your cards. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value. They will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. They give you the best price for your cards. They work with competitive buy listing partners, including ones not open to the public. Users get an average of 19% more for their collection than they would from any major retail buy list, even with Card Conduit's fees. Card Conduit also optimizes buy listing for card condition as well. Since vendors have different penalties for wear and tear, Card Conduit will find the best buy list priced against the specific condition of the card. So give Card Conduit a try today. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ryan, Pouting Joyra, Weatherlight Captain. This is a storm deck that looks to draw cards off of its commander and cast a bunch of artifacts for the win. Ryan's opening hand contains a Bergy God of Storytelling, Chrome Mox, Ancient Tomb, Dockside Extortionist, Sensei's Divining Top, and his London Mulligans are Transmute Artifact and Urza Lord High Artificer. Next, we have John piloting Itali Primal Storm. This deck uses fast mana to power out its commander and take infinite combat steps. His opening hand contains two mountains, Sensei's Divining Top, Faithless Salvaging, Brainstone, and his London Mulligans are Thunderclap and Tyrant of Discord. Next, we have Ashani piloting Tibbet, Seller of Secrets. This is a mid-range deck that seeks to win with Time Sieve or Thassa's Oracle combos. Ashani's opening hand contains Averted Catacombs, Godly Shrine, Talisman of Dominance, Mental Misstep, Lotus Petal, Misty Rainforest, and Aristic Study. Finally, we have Nick, pounding Sin Triplets. This is an Esper Stacks deck trying to slow the game down to grind value out of its opponent's hand and win with Thassa's Oracle combos. Nick's opening hand contains an Esper Sentinel, Phantasmal Image, Dothy Voidwalker, Toxic Deluge, Polluted Delta, Cursed Totem, and a Lavinia Azorius Renegade. Without further ado, let's jump into this Jealous Gene Jargon jackpot. Ryan was able to name the most creatures in Star Wars and gets to start us off. Ryan draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Bergy, God of Storytelling. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Sensei's Dividing Top. He uses the floating mana to spin the top, looking at and rearranging the top three. He passes the turn. John draws and plays a Mountain. He casts a Sensei's Dividing Top as well. He ends the turn. Ashani draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He casts a Mystic Remora. He casts a Lotus Petal. He ships the turn to Nick. Nick draws and plays a Hollow Fountain into play untapped, paying two life. He casts an Esper Sentinel. He passes the turn. Ryan draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He taps his Ink to Doom to cast Dockside Extortionist. In response, John activates his top, drawing a card, and putting top on top of his library. Dockside enters, and Ryan creates three treasures. He casts a Time Twister. Remora and Esper Sentinel trigger, and Ashani and Nick both draw. Then Time Twister resolves, and everyone shuffles their hand and graveyard into their libraries and draws seven. With nothing to do with his new hand, Ryan ships the turn. John draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps Ancient Tomb to cast Magus of the Moon. He passes the turn to Ashani. During his upkeep, Ashani pays for his Mystic Remora. He draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He ends his turn. Nick draws and plays a Mox Opal. Remora triggers, and Ashani draws. He casts a Sensei's Divining Top. Remora triggers and Ashani draws again. He moves to combat and attacks Ashani with Esper Sentinel. Ashani takes it and Nick ships the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan activates his top, rearranging the top three. He draws and plays an island. He casts his commander, Joyra, Weatherlight Captain. He passes the turn. John draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He moves to combat and attacks Ashani with Magus of the Moon. Ashani takes it and in his second main phase, John casts Imperial Recruiter. Recruiter enters and John fetches up a Treasonous Ogre into his hand. John passes. At the end of John's turn, Ashani casts Hydra Blast, targeting Magus of the Moon. Magus is destroyed, and with Magus out of the way, Ashani cracks his Polluted Delta, pays a life, and fetches up a Watery Grave onto the battlefield tapped. The turn moves to Ashani. 
During his upkeep, Ashani lets his Remora die. He draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts a Soul Ring. Sentinel triggers and Nick draws a card. Ashani casts Rhystic Study. In response, Nick casts Brainstorm, drawing three and putting two back on top. Study resolves and Ashani passes. Nick draws and casts a Soul Ring. Rhystic triggers and Ashani draws. He casts a Dranath Magistrate, paying the Rhystic tax. He moves to combat and attacks Ashani with Sentinel. Ashani takes it and Nick passes. At the end of Nick's turn, Ashani taps Mana Confluence to cast Chain of Vapor, targeting Joyra. Esper triggers and Nick draws. Chain of Vapor resolves, bouncing Joyra. Ryan sacrifices a land, copying the chain, bouncing his Dockside. Then Ryan stops the chain. The turn moves to Ryan. Ryan draws and taps his Ancient Tomb to recast Dockside Extortionist, paying the Rhystic tax. In response, Nick activates his top, drawing a card and putting top on top. Dockside enters and Ryan creates five treasures. He recasts his commander, Joyra, Weatherlight Captain. Rhystic triggers and Ashani draws. Ryan casts Mox Diamond, Joyra, Rhystic, and Esper trigger. Nick draws from Sentinel, Ryan pays for Rhystic, and then he draws from Joyra. Mox Diamond resolves and Ryan discards Shiv and Reef. He plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Steam Vents into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Jessica's Will, targeting Ashani. Rhystic triggers and Ashani draws. Jessica's Will resolves and Ryan adds nine red. Ryan casts Dragon's Rage Channeler, paying the Rhystic tax. He casts a Gamble. Channeler and Rhystic Trigger. He pays for his stick and then he surveils a Mana Confluence into his graveyard. Gamble resolves and he fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards an offer you can't refuse. He casts a Wheel of Fortune, paying the Rhystic Tax. Channeler triggers and Ryan surveils a Polluted Delta. In response, Ashani casts Mind Break Trap for its alternate cost targeting Wheel of Fortune. Sentinel triggers and Nick draws. Wheel is exiled, then Ryan spends his top looking at and rearranging the top three. With nothing else to do, Ryan ends his turn. John draws and plays a Mountain. He cracks his Bloodstained Mire, pays a life, and fetches up a Mountain onto the battlefield. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Treasonous Ogre. Rhystic triggers and Ashani draws. John pays 18 life through Ogre, adding 6 red. He casts... Godo, Bandit Warlord. <laughs> the table tries to understand what is going on right now, and Rhystic triggers. Ashani draws, then Godo resolves. Godo enters, and John fetches up Helm of the Host onto the battlefield. John pays 15 life through the Ogre, adding 5 red. He equips Helm to Godo. He presents a loop of making a copy of Goto at the beginning of combat, attacking with it and untapping all samurai he controls, then getting another combat phase. He proceeds to take infinite attacks, kills the table, and John wins the game. The players enjoyed that game so much that they decided to run it back again. In this game, John brings back Atali, Primal Storm, and his opening hand contains a Mountain, Grinning Ignis, Pyretic Ritual, Homeward Path, Command Beacon, and his London Mulligans are Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker and Chaos War. Ashani brings back Tibbet, Seller of Secrets, and his opening hand contains an Imperial Seal, Jeweled Lotus, Exotic Orchard, Notion Thief, Transmute Artifact, Mox Diamond, and Aspire of Industry. Nick brings back Zen Triplets, and his opening hand contains a Demonic Consultation, Rhystic Study, Flooded Strand, Arcane Signet, Underground Sea, Sensei's Divining Top, and his London Mulligan is a Weathered Runestone. Ryan brings back Joyra, Weatherlight Captain, and his opening hand contains an Urza, Lord High Artificer, Windfall, Soul Ring, Scalding Tarn, Mental Misstep, Rhystic Study, and a Wooded Foothills. And John gets to start us off. John draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a mountain onto the battlefield. He passes. Ashani draws and plays a Spire of Industry. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Exotic Orchard. He casts an Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He ends his turn. Nick draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He casts a Sensei's Divining Top. He ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Training Center. He casts a Soul Ray. He ships the turn. John draws and plays a Homeward Path. He casts Pyretic Ritual, adding 3 red. He casts Jessica's Will, targeting Ryan, adding 6 red. He casts his Commander, Itali, Primal Storm. The table starts to talk about how to deal with this huge threat, and John passes the turn. Ashani draws and plays an Underground Sea. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts his commander, Tivit, Seller of Secrets. Tivit enters and Ashani creates two treasures and three clues. He casts Time Sieve. In response, Nick activates Divining Top, hoping to draw interaction. He draws a card and puts Top on Top. With no answers, Time Sieve resolves. Ashani activates Time Sieve, sacrificing its clues, Mana Crypt, and Mox Diamond, gaining an extra turn. He presents a loop of taking extra turns, attacking an opponent and creating five clues and treasures, and then sacrificing them to Time Sieve to get another turn. After attacking each opponent for 18 commander damage and drawing 9 cards from those extra turns, he casts an arcane signet and then kills Ryan with commander damage. He then sacrifices the signet, taking an extra turn. On his following turn, he kills Nick with commander damage. Without enough artifacts for one last time sieve activation, he casts swords to plowshares, exiling Atali with John gaining 6 life. Ashani passes the turn to John. John draws, sees that he doesn't have a way to stop Tibbet, decides to concede, and Ashani wins the game. Wow, 
What an explosive game. The players decide to play again to determine whose fair magic deck is the most fair at this table. Ashani brings back Tibbet, Seller of Secrets, and his opening hand contains an Esper Sentinel, Marsh Flats, Godless Shrine, Underground Sea, Scrubland, Savine's Reclamation, and a Counterbalance. Nick brings back Sen Triplets, and his opening hand contains a Tundra, Exotic Orchard, Mystic Remora, Lavinia, Azorius Renegade, Force of Negation, Delay, and an Enlightened Tutor. Ryan brings back Joyra, Weatherlight Captain, and his opening hand contains a Lotus Petal, Mox Diamond, Arcane Signet, Wheel of Fortune, Cavern of Souls, Prismatic Vista, and a River Glide Pathway. John brings back Atali, Primal Storm, and his opening hand contains two Mountains, Duretti, Scrap Savant, Treasonous Ogre, Jeweled Lotus, Ragaman, Nimble Pilferer, and a Wooded Foothills. And Ashani gets to start us off. Ashani draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Hallowed Fountain onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. He casts an Esper Sentinel. He ends the turn. Nick draws and plays a Tundra. He casts a Mystic Remora. Sentinel triggers and Ashani draws. Nick passes the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Prismatic Vista. He grumbles about a turn one Sentinel and Mystic Remora and passes the turn. John draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a mountain onto the battlefield. He casts Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. He ships the turn. Ashani draws and plays an Underground Sea. He casts Counterbalance. Remora triggers and Nick draws. In response, Nick casts Force of Negation for its alternate cost, exiling a blue card, targeting Counterbalance. Sentinel triggers and Ashani draws. Counterbalance is countered and exiled, and Ashani moves to combat. He attacks Nick with Esper Sentinel. Nick takes it, and Ashani ends his turn. During his upkeep, Nick pays to keep his Remora. He draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He does nothing else and passes the turn. At the end of Nick's turn, Ryan cracks his Prismatic Vista, pays a life, and fetches up an island onto the battlefield. Ryan draws and plays a Lava Glide Pathway. He casts a Mox Diamond. Sentinel and Remora trigger, and Ashani and Nick draw. Mox Diamond resolves, and Ryan discards Cavern of Souls. He casts Bergy, God of Storytelling. He ships the turn to John. John draws and moves to combat. He attacks Ashani with Ragavan. Ashani takes it, Ragavan triggers, Ashani exiles Forbidden Orchard, and John creates a treasure. In his second main phase, John casts a Jeweled Lotus. Sentinel and Remora trigger, and Ashani and Nick draw. He plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Dinosaur as it enters. He cracks his Jeweled Lotus to help cast his commander, Atali, Primal Storm. He passes the turn. Ashani draws and plays a Scrubland. He casts a Graft Digger's Cage. Remora triggers, and Nick draws. Ashani passes. At the end of Ashani's turn, Nick casts Enlightened Tutor. Sentinel triggers, and Ashani draws. In response, Ashani flashes in an Archivist of Ogma. Then Tudor resolves and Nick fetches up a Mana Crypt onto the top of his library. Archivist triggers and Ashani gains a life and draws a card. Ashani ends the turn and discards the hand size. During his upkeep, Nick lets his Remora die. He draws and casts a Mana Crypt. Sentinel triggers and Ashani draws. He casts Toxic Deluge, paying 6 life, wiping the board. He casts a Mox Opal. He ends his turn. Ryan draws and casts a Lotus Petal. He casts Ethereum Sculptor. He casts an Arcane Signet. He passes the turn. John draws and plays a Mountain. He casts a scroll rack. He ships the turn to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays a Tundra. He casts a Lotus Petal. He ends the turn. During his upkeep, Nick wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts a Draneth Magistrate. He passes the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Wheel of Fortune. In response, Ashani casts Silence. In response, Ryan casts Fierce Guardianship, targeting Silence. In response, John activates Scroll Rack, exiling one, drawing one, and putting one on top. Then Fierce Guardianship counters Silence and Wheel of Fortune resolves. Each player discards their hand and draws seven. The wheel unfortunately didn't give Ryan what he needed to keep going, so he ends the turn. John draws and casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Draneth Magistrate. In response, Nick casts Miscast, targeting Lightning Bolt. In response, Ashani casts Delay, targeting Miscast. Delay resolves, countering and exiling Miscast with three time counters on it. Then Bolt resolves, killing Magistrate. With the path clear, John casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts Treasonous Ogre. He pays 15 life through Ogre, adding 5 red. Everyone is wondering what reality they are in as John casts Zealous Conscripts. The table breathes a sigh of relief and Conscripts resolves. Conscripts enters, targeting Ashani's Lotus Petal. In response, Ashani cracks it for a blue mana. John moves to combat and attacks Nick with Conscripts. Nick takes it, and in his second main phase, John pays 3 life through Ogre, adding a red. He casts Active Volcano, targeting Ryan's Island, bouncing it to his hand. He pays 21 life through Ogre, adding 7 red, and recasts his commander, Atali, Primal Storm. He ships the turn. Ashani draws and plays an Ottawara, Soaring City. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts his commander, Tivit, Seller of Secrets. Tivit enters and Ashani creates two treasures and three clues. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Nick loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. Also during his upkeep, he removes a time counter from Mistcast. He draws and plays a City of Brass. He casts Rest in Peace. Rest in Peace enters and exiles all graveyards. Nick passes the turn. Ryan draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Dockside Extortionist. In response, Nick casts Mana Drain, targeting Dockside. Dockside is countered, and both cards are exiled through Rest in Peace. Ryan casts a Rhystic Study. He gives the turn to John. 
During John's upkeep, the fate of his life depends on his mana crypt roll. He rolls and dies. The turn moves to Ashani. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Nick with Tivit. Nick takes it and Tivit triggers. Ashani creates two treasures and two clues. In his second main phase, he casts Ranger Captain of Eos, Pain for Ristic. Ranger Captain enters and Ashani declines to search. He casts Dothy Voidwalker, Pain for Ristic. He plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. He passes. During his upkeep, Nick removes a counter from Miscast. He also loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and in his first main phase, he has two colorless through mana drain. He plays Aspire of Industry as his land for turn. He casts his commander, send triplets, and Ryan draws through Ristic Study. Nick ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Shiv and Reef. He casts his commander, Joyra, Weatherlight Captain. In response, Ashani sacrifices his Ranger Captain, locking out opponents from non-creature spells this turn. Ryan sighs, then Joyra resolves. He casts the Reality Chip. Joyra triggers and Ryan draws. With nothing else, he ends the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Ashani cracks a Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a Watery Grave onto the battlefield tapped. He also cracks two clues and draws two cards. The turn moves to Ashani. During his upkeep, Ashani wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Nick with Dothy Voidwalker and Ryan with Tivit. They both take it and Tivit triggers. Ashani creates two treasures and two clues. In his second main phase, he casts Teferi, Time Raveler, paying the Ristic Tax. He casts Thassa's Oracle. Since everyone is locked out through Teferi, there is nothing anyone can do. Oracle resolves and with the trigger on the stack, he casts a Mana Consultation. He names You Are Already Dead, exiling his library. Oracle's trigger resolves and Ashani wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a wild set of games. Congrats to John and Ashani on their wins tonight. In game one, John caught everyone by surprise with his secret commander Godo bandit warlord. Ryan shed a single tear at the beauty of it all as they all got completely blindsided. In game two, Ashani showed that Tivit can win on turn two even with a high mana value commander. In game three, Ashani showed that Tivit can also play a longer game and grind advantage from all the clues and treasures from his opponents. The most valuable card in tonight's games, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Tivit, Seller of Secrets. Whenever this commander hits the battlefield, it generates so much mana and card advantage. It is a huge tempo swing with advantage, a combo enabler, and also a big threat to life totals. This commander is quite the up-and-comer, and we love this massive sphinx in every game we play. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.